I am in Silicon Valley, where amazing things happen in nondescript places. And behind this fence is a nondescript garage where they're 3D printing amazing things, and I get to show you. Come on. John Mark. Hey, Joyce. How have you been? I've been all right. Thanks for letting us come in here. You know, from the street, it's so unassuming. Right. You walk back here, and all of a sudden, there's this incredible facility and it starts with a bunch of Lulzbot 3D printers and they're making a bunch of parts for Millibox. Yeah. So clue me in, what are they making? So uh, we, we, we started using Lulzbot back in 2018 with the Task 6 and the Workhorse and now we just received those uh, fantastic Task 8 that we, uh, we've been using. What we're doing, basically, we are using um, the Lulzbot to make two components, the anechoic chamber and the uh, positioner, the 3D positioner for the antenna testing. An anechoic chamber. <laughs> You're using 3D printing to make an anechoic chamber. Right, we have almost like 600 parts and we need to police them like 24 seven here. These eight so machines they never stops. are making hundreds of parts. Yeah. That's a lot. And then uh, we put, it, put them together and we sell our products all over the world. That's amazing. Well, yeah. and so the anechoic chamber, I can, I, I understand what that is. I've got, you know, I, in my brain, you know, yeah. there's the foam and there's the, the antennas and stuff, but you're also talking about the positioner for the antenna yeah. too. It's a robotic uh, uh, a positioner, a 3D positioner that orients the antenna to measure the radiation pattern. Do you is want this to see a, it? Yeah, is this something you can show me? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. So we're standing in front of the anechoic chamber and this yeah. is the robotic positioner, correct? That's right. That's, we, some, some people call it a gimbal, we call it a positioner. It's a 3D positioner. It, it's, uh, this one is HV, so it's azimuth and elevation, which are the terms uh, in the RF industry to uh, decide the, the angle of the, uh, to measure the radiation pattern. And so, this, is, this is an antenna here, right? So that's an antenna, that's the device under test that is placed right at the center of rotation. And then we have those two motors that are you know, driven by a Python code that we provide and you can plot your entire 3D radiation pattern out of this. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Because of the motion of the gimbal, then you get a 360 degree reference of the pattern that it's creating. That's right, that's right. And you want to make sure you're in an anechoic chamber so that you don't have stray reflections. So we this is actually, this absorbs RF? It's highly carbon loaded. It absorbs the uh, waves and radiation and any energy. You want to make sure, like for audio, you know, a little bit, you have a sound, sound booth. You know, yeah. you want to make sure there is no echoes or anything that will uh, spoil your measurement. So I've heard of, and I've worked inside of uh, like a Faraday cage. Yeah. Is this a similar concept? Right. So the Faraday cage is to avoid interference from the outside to the inside, right? Here we're not too concerned about interference. We are concerned about stray reflections. I see. So at those, uh, we, we are going from 18 gigahertz to 330 gigahertz. So it's very high up there, you know, approaching infrared lights. Right. So that you don't, um, you're not too concerned about pollution from the environment, but you're very concerned about yourself, you know, echoing and reflecting inside the sense. chamber. We build a chamber with parts that, you know, uh, we print. All those parts are 3D printed. Yeah, I see the these. Part. Very familiar yeah. with the 3D printed parts. It's great that you use these. And, uh, and the positioner, for the most part, is made of 3D printed parts, except the motors. We don't like metal. Metal reflects. Right. It's like you have mirrors, you know, in a, in a, in a damping room, yeah, you, and, and then you, you start seeing lights everywhere. So you, we really want to avoid metal as much as we can. That makes a lot that's of sense. That's why uh, the PLA that we use is a great uh, in terms of uh, RF properties. Well, it's also so, really easy to print. And yes. I would imagine the customers of Millibox, if they have ideas for changes, then PLA being an easy material to print, they could technically augment their positioner right. with their changes, right? Right. PLA's uh, modularity and affordability and uh, flexibility. And it's very important that we provide that to our customers that you know, we can give them some CAD parts, the CAD for some parts that they want to modify and hack and mod, and we always support modding, improving, and ideas. Being at 3D printed then, the iteration rate is super fast because right, like right. if you fix a bug in software, you can publish a new version. Yeah. So with 3D printing, you fix a bug in your right. hardware software, you can publish a new version. And we can accommodate customization and, and customer request. And, and our customer, they don't feel entrapped, you know, oh, they have this, it's rigid, and there's no way out, you know. Us very different from the rest of the industry. Yeah, uh, That's well, a very, obviously. very... <laughs> I mean, we love them, we hate them. They've been around for like 30 years, but they are, they are business model still not evolved much. 
Yeah, you're hip. You're cool. Very cool. Well, and really, talking about hip and cool, I see the things up top. Can I grab right. one of these? Yeah, 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 yeah. So then if you're, I would assume, since you're yeah. measuring your the RF from an antenna, right? like this is the visualization of that, right? Power doesn't have a, re a physical representation usually. Yeah. But here you're measuring, you're measuring the power out of the uh, the antenna and you measure it you measure the power and then you see if you're sending the energy the right direction that's the most important thing for people using our device they want to see if their their antenna is efficient so this would be the right direction this would be like losses in a way i but, see okay so they, they oh wait, wait, wait. hold on hold on so then this essentially is like right here. Exactly. Oh, but you can't see okay. It. But you can't see it, but, but you can measure it. Yeah. And then after that, we uh, you can uh, generate an STL file and you can print it. That's well, and more. the point of it isn't to print this. It's the software and the data you get, but it right. just so happens the data you could turn into an STL and make something really yeah. creative out of it. Yeah, and people like that, you know, like, like I said, how you're gonna get a raise, you know, you show it to your boss and say, look at the antenna I did, and it's like, well, that's that's magnificent, you get that's, a raise. <laughs> a raise? That's a trophy, we do competition of the best antenna, and something that? like this, people can, people can compete and do something. Okay, so this though, th so you said, no metal, good. Yeah. I, I originally thought this was metal, but no, this is yeah, PVC. This is PVC. And you actually do the cutting and the jigs and the manufacture of this right here too, right? Yeah, we all do that here. I mean, actually just next door. Well, can we go see it? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. This is where the parts you print end up, right? Yeah. Right in here. Yeah. And you have to do something first too. And I thought this was fascinating. What are you doing to these parts? Yeah, so the thing is that before, I mean, here we, we're storing the, uh, the path that they're ready for assembly. And we'll, we'll have a look at that later. But first, we are, they have to go in the oven. So we are annealing them. We're doing, we, we use a special form of PLA that needs to be, uh, that, that can be annealed in the oven. Can I grab one? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, we use this. So or, what is the print? So the, the print orientation looks right. like this? Yes. Okay. So now annealing this, you're going to get, you're right. going to get shrinkage, so we, right? We, we, we get some, uh, we get some shrinkage and some compression. So uh, what we're doing is 101% uh, for the X and Y, and then we do 100% for the Z. Oh, so when you're annealing these parts, you're not expecting any compression or any shrinkage in, on in, the Z-axis. Right. I think the gravity uh, compensates for the the expansion. So when it's hot, you get gravity helping on Z, but then you get the shrinkage on X and Y, and so right. that's why 101%. Right. So it shrinks down. So then, so has bit. this been annealed? Uh, yes, all those have. These are all annealed. Yeah. Oh, well then put the PVC in. Does it? Yeah. Does it, it's, it's, so now you, you get a, 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 a nice a, a sturdy, sturdy fit. fit. Oh, wow. So we spend a lot of, uh, because those have to stay very round to accommodate. So it takes uh, quite a bit of uh, tuning to do that. And it's a lot of work. You're doing the manufacturing here. So you need to drill the holes in here, right? That's right. To, to make, fit the, within to make that? the frame. We have to cut to uh, shape and then, uh, and then drill them, you know, align. And yeah. we use 3D printing uh, jig for that too. Really? Yes. Can we go do that? Yes. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. Sean Mark has, has some really cool stuff. So one of the things we, we want to show you though at this station is 3D printed jigs that he uses with the drill press. And then the other thing is captive bolts. And then yeah. finally, he's actually tapping parts, 3D printed parts as well, right? Yeah. So let's first start with the tapping of the parts. Okay. You have a red part here. Yeah. And you have a tap. In right. your drill. So it's just that straight out of the uh, of the 3D printer. And then we are tapping. That's uh, fine. You know, the floor is done. Uh, now my floor is messy too. So we do it a couple of times like this. Okay. We try it with the bolt. And when oh. it's like this, it's ready to go. So that's the door hinge. That's ready to go. Well, that's perfect. Well, and, and tapping 3D printed parts, it's not a smaller hole. It is a sizable hole. But right. also, we're not talking something that has to hold hundreds of kilograms. This is just right. to hold things together. So this is a perfect solution. Especially we do it only we do it only once. I mean, if you do something that you know you have to take out and take back, you know that that may you know erode of, over time. But this one is a one time one time uh, uh, one time assembly and it works well. That's perfect. Okay, so now. Captive bolt. It's Captive bolt is another that, that we spend a lot of hours on that trying to get the the bolts. So those are what size is the, that? That's an M8. Oh, an M8 bolt. Okay. Uh, a standard M8 by 25. Okay, it's so it's going in the part, and then oh, just like fits, that, it fits in there. Okay, it stays captive. So there's a there's more space on the inside. Well, and, and, and capturing it too, 
you're not trying to hold it steady. You're just trying to hold it in place so it doesn't yeah, fall out. Exactly. Right. You just so, that so is, you can be loose and then you tighten it up on assembly and it's right. pushing against that axis and then, exactly. and then you're good. Now though, so let, we've let, got a drill press. Let's build the frame. And we got oh, we're just yeah. gonna build it. We're gonna build a frame. Let's build a frame. <laughs> What's the first step? The first step is that you drill a hole. I mean you hold it here. Yeah, yeah, hold it here. And then you turn. Just like that. And then we continue with putting some more and um, we build the frame. And after that, you can, uh, you can attach the, the panel from the outside. So that in that way, we can ship you know, flat, a little bit like IKEA, because what we're doing, you know, an echoic chamber is really a, cha it's really a box it's just, of it's air. A, it's a, it's a big box. It's empty. Easier than IKEA. Easier than IKEA. There's the Millibox tagline, easier than <laughs> IKEA. Uh, I can't believe I got to build something uh, this is cool. Millibox seems like a really interesting idea. It's 3D printed. So Jean-Marc, what I want you to do, look in the camera right there yeah. and tell everybody where they can go to find out more about what you do at Millibox. Okay, you can go online on www.millibox.org and uh, find our product if you're interested in finding more about what we do. Well, this has been a fantastic journey through manufacturing and, and looking at an anechoic chamber and 3D printing with Lulzbot. This has been fun. Thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. 3D print all the RF. <laughs> and as always, high five. You want one? Yeah.